On the tube, trainee driver Terence handles a train for the first time. Okay, okay. that's where the brake test is. There's your coast. Okay. And 60-year-old Keith does it for the last. Hit me one more time. <sighs> Lovely, innit? With over 500 trains running every day, London Underground need a lot of drivers. In fact, they have over 3,000 of them. And every week, another one begins on the network. Today, Terence Makubika from Zimbabwe is applying for the post of train operator. With 12 lines to choose from, Terence is keen to start on an up-to-date line like the Jubilee. Jubilee line will be the best. Well, second priority central line, maybe Piccadilly line. Mm, the district line, mm, the trains are too old now. Do you want to pop your headphones on? It costs the underground up to £18,000 to train each driver. So Terence has to go through a barrage of tests to make sure he'll be up to the job. After that, it's straight into the classroom for the start of an intensive 17-week course. When you're using the traction brake control, this is your way of controlling that traction. But the first hands-on experience of trains he gets is slightly underwhelming. This model railway is designed to operate just like the real thing. It gives you the practical of what you need to know, but it will never be the same as being on the train itself. And that overlap is related to what signalling section? This one, A131. Yeah, it's related to 131. And then what speed are we going to move forward? I just want to be in front of the train. If they can just cut out the train and say, go on the train, that is what I'm waiting for. Once qualified, drivers are overseen by people like duty manager for trains, Andy Hogg. I've got the big hat on today and the big stick to hit anyone that's not doing what they're supposed to do. Today, he's checking his driver's speed over a piece of track, which has a 20 mile an hour limit. What we've got here looks like a common or golden tuning fork. Uh, and in fact, it is a common or golden tuning fork, but it's a very specially machined one. What it does when you, you hit it and it rings, it gives a 65 mile an hour reading on the, on the piece of kit. Here we go, good 65 miles an hour. And now we simply wait for our uh, first victim. Nineteen. There we go. Nineteen miles now. In a twenty zone, so I think that's quite acceptable. Yeah, I was a driver on a district uh, and a northern line before that, uh, and no, I didn't get caught speeding um, because I never had this equipment. There is a certain amount of leeway. Um, you've got a ten percent buffer zone, if you like. Over that, it really depends on, on the level of speed that the driver is doing above the speed limit. Ranging from anything from just a little word in their ear, watch your speed, through to formal disciplinary action if a driver isn't speeding excessively. There we've got one, 24 miles an hour. Yeah, okay. Which is over the, the buffer zone, it's over the 10%. So he knows his, his speedometer would have showed he was going about 20 miles an hour. Um, but that's not fast enough to warrant discipline reaction. So when we see the driver concern, we just have a little word in his ear to say, watch your speed, and I want to see that again. As a driver, experience counts. And there's no more experienced driver on the Metropolitan Line than 60-year-old Keith Tibbles, who began on the underground aged 15. My father said to me, you ever come on London Underground, I'll kick your backside. I said, you better kick your backside, I'm starting tomorrow. <laughs> His father worked for 24 years on the Underground and Keith started as a boy porter at Amersham. I remember my first day, steam train came into Amersham. The driver said, there's something bouncing underneath, he says. And we got down and had a look at somebody's head. So I was, I was broke in gently. 
The world's first underground railway, and originally steam, the Metropolitan Line was only electrified past Rickmansworth in 1961. When you're a kid, you get a smell of steam in your, in your lungs, you know, and it never leaves you. It never leaves you, and you smell a steam train, you oh, lovely, it's great. But a million miles away from the world of steam is the Northern Line's high-tech tube simulator suite. Costing over four million pounds, it's about to put Terence and the other trainees through their paces. I can hear an alarm in the background. Uh, have you got any problems there? On the simulator, you know, you have people who are going to put each and everything, everything that can go wrong for you there. This makes me more nervous than being on the train itself, trust me. Come on in, my friend. Right, OK. <laughs> Don't listen to you. As Terence is starting his training, Keith is coming to the end of his career. He's retiring today, and after 44 years of service, is about to drive a train for the last time. All the characters are gradually going over the years. We were just saying this morning how it's only four generations ago that the Metropolitan Railway started. So if you think of uh, four people that were doing the same amount of service as Keith has done, that's when it all began. So it's quite a historical moment, in a way. You're going to be missed, Keith, you know that. <laughs> Last trip? Yes, sir. Okay. Enjoy yourself. Yeah. See ya. See ya. Hit me one more time. <sighs> Lovely, innit? Stay clear of doors, please, ladies and gentlemen. This train is now ready to depart. Stay clear of doors. It really seems as if I'm driving a real train. You know, saying the things on the simulator and the sounds, they're just original. I've got an MCB tripped. Something just happened on my train. Oh my god. I've got a defect. If this happens in the real world when I'm driving the train, this would be just too much for one shift. Oh, I love the mail, yeah. Well, it shows, doesn't it? On the longest serving chat on the, on the mail. 44 years and seven months, which is a lifetime. Ooh, Gil. Fast Moke Street train, calling Harrow on the Hill, Wembley Park, Fidgey Road and Baker Street only. Stay and clear of the doors, please. Well, a bit, a bit sad in some ways because it's an era, isn't it? Dinosaur, isn't it? You've got to go with modern times, but I can't. I can't move on. And when something comes along new, we don't like it. But I still reckon the old ways the best. Can't remember what the speed limit is, so I might be going over the speed limit. Oh, he's going a bit fast now. Though. No, it's too So I'm checking on my monitors to see if everything is clear when I'm approaching the platform. Oh. No, there we go. Oh! I'm going too fast, I'm going too fast. I've overrun the platform. Drugs and alcohol. Yeah, controller, I am at Woodside Park Station at the moment. I've overrun the platform with uh, half cast length. Right, okay, if you can remain now, I'll get the station supervisor down to check the situation out. <laughs> One of the naughtiest things to do to overrun this station. I have to make a PA to my customers. I don't know what I will say to them, because I know they are not very happy. Ladies and gentlemen, I do apologize about the situation. I have not been able to stop at the previous station due to a station overrun. Once again, I do apologize. Thank you very much. This is not a very good situation, because I know customers are not happy now. <laughs> what can you do though? Uh, there's nothing much I can do, just continue. As long as I don't get out of my cab, I'll be safe. Because <laughs> if I go back in there, then I'm done. 
If I had a pound for every time I'd run up and down here, I'd be a millionaire. I wouldn't need the lottery. This is Baker Street. This train terminates here. All change, please. Will you make sure you have all your belongings with you when you leave the train, please? Yeah, remember to start it as well. Yeah. <laughs> Give me another train. <laughs> This one's got a problem with the brakes. <laughs> <laughs> the brakes are weak. Brakes are weak on this one. You know what I'm saying? A bad one can always blame their tools. That's right. Push them in. Oh, oh me, I keep back. old-fashioned ways, it's been hard to keep up in a high-tech world. Hola. One of the most technologically advanced parts of the underground is inside the central line control room, where signalman Bob Yeldon works. I would compare this controlling uh, our line as an air traffic control room. Um, air traffic controller knows what's going on in his airspace. We know what's going on on our line. Right. Just... But Bob is also a traditionalist at heart. I'm not really one for the high-tech stuff. Um, I either prefer the low-tech stuff. You can get in, you can get your hands dirty, and at the end of the day, you know exactly what you're doing. I personally am a preservationist. It's a world apart from here. He loves nothing more than restoring rusty old underground trains. And in the corner of a depot in Acton lies one that has brought out the train spotter in him. It is a unique loco. It used to be a passenger train, and they took the passenger saloons away and then pushed the two ends together, and uh, this is what you've got. If it went to a one-way trip to um, Booz of Rotherham for scrapping, where it would come back in probably six months' time as baked bean cans, that's not what we want to see. So Bob and his team are saving the locomotive and moving it from Acton Depot to their own private siding in Epping. But transporting 45 tonnes of locomotive around the M25 is no mean feat. The last time I saw it, there was a half a tarpaulin over it and a buddleia growing through it, and it's just left there forlorn and lonely. Got it. There you go. Piece of London underground history. Excellent. Chuffed. Trainee train driver Terence is about to take his first exam to find out if he'll finally be able to get into the front seat of a Northern Line train. Today is uh, judgment day, if I can say. Uh, we are doing our final assessments, practical ones. So it is not an easy day today. If he doesn't pass, it could be a six-month wait to retake the test. So he can't afford to fail. 